This position is white to play, and it is test number five for the section on knights. And pause it here if you want to work on this position. All right. This position occurred in the game Selman versus Booth, Los Angeles, 1987. Both sides have vul vulnerable queenside pawns, a6 for black and b2 for white. But white's more active minor pieces an advantage in central space, which leaves black constantly worrying about f4, f5, and e4, e5, gives white the better chances. At the moment, the pride of white's position is the c4 knight, but black would love to exchange it for his far less imposing beast on d7 via knight to b6. When you look at this position in this fashion, white's first move shouldn't come as a surprise. Explaining the rating spread. Though you might be getting used to knight retreats by now, the solution is also is obscured by central possibilities and chances to create pressure against a6. So the move that we're gonna the correct move is knight b1, and what he's saying is it's hard to consider a knight retreat because there's so much going on in the center. And we also have to think about this pawn here, we could attack this pawn, but the knight retreat seems to be the best plan here. Also, white already has a knight on c4, so why bring the other knight to, b to bear on the same square? Clearly, there's a lot more going on than a simple knight retreat, and that's what makes it an advanced problem. Knight to b1, exclaim. Knight to b6. Black would love to play f5. So we have the f pawn protected by the knight here. But it fails to f takes e5, rook takes e1, bishop takes e1, knight takes f5, and bishop takes b4. So the freeing maneuver does not work. And if the knight takes back, just the rook hangs. So black's very passive here. And any time that one side has to be stuck with less space like this, they, they, they always have to play something if they're to not doom themselves to passive defense, they usually want to play something to gain more space and free up their pieces like f5, if it's tactically possible. Okay, so knight, knight b6. Knight b to d2. Mission accomplished. White retains an octopus on c4. And why is the octopus so strong on that square? A glance shows that its many arms reach in all directions. Of course, it eyes internal squares on a3, d2, and e3, but that's to be expected. It turns into a super, superhero when one realizes that it defends upon a b2, eyes a5, this is a weak square a5, which can be a jumping off point to c6 via knight c4 to a5 to c6, so the knight coming here and then here. This also means that when white starts attacking the a pawn with rook a1, Black won't want to push the pawn to a5 since that would walk right into the knight's influence. The knight on c4 also eyes b6, puts serious pressure on d6. This is a weak pawn because it's backwards, and also takes a swing at e5. This prepares for white's thematic e4, e5 push or f4, f5. If f4, f5 is played, Mr. Octopus keeps the hole on e5 from becoming terminal. So if f5 is pushed for white and somehow black gets a knight to e5, the knight on c4 can exchange so that the e5 square doesn't become a good outpost for black. Okay, so knight takes c4. This only helps white, though queen to b8, knight to a5, exclaim, rook takes b2, rook b1 is seriously annoying. So here, white has all the initiative after something like takes, takes. For some reason, I just wanted to look at this move, c4. It does not, um, just doesn't do anything. So takes, they can just take back, I think. So, and we still have a lot of counterplay. Actually, Yeah, I think that's the best way to play it. Okay, so 
Another line would be instead of queen b8, f5 now. And this is worse because that because e5 can be played. So another possibility would be knight f7. The tight knight f7 would have done more to keep white advantage within acceptable limits. Okay, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, knight f7. Rook a1, queen to b7. Question mark. Things get out of hand after this. Black had to try queen e7 when rook fe1 takes the e1 square away from white's bishop. Then queen d7, followed by queen to b5, keeps black in the game. These are very difficult plans to see. Okay, bishop e1, rook to b5, bishop c3. So this bishop is, seems like it's on a really good square now. Defending the b-pawn, keeping an eye on e5, hitting f6. It's really active. So queen to e7, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, queen e7, rook f e1. Black's now strategically lost. He has no active play, his pieces are passive, his d6 pawn is in need of constant defense, and his a6 pawn is ultimately a goner. Queen to b7, f5, g5. So I don't think they wanted to take and open up this file, because... White's going to have a much easier time attacking on the king side. And this also looks pretty good for white, getting the rook to e6. So this just does not look good for, for black. So g5, they want to keep it closed. Rook a4. So the rest of the game does not have comment. Rook a8. Rook e to a1. It's funny when one side has literally no good moves to make. It's all over. The rest doesn't need any comments, says Silman. Queen e7. It's very simple chess, but it works. Just bringing their pieces to their maximum activity squares. So this was hitting the d6 pawn, so black defends it. Okay, 7, h5, queen, queen e7. Queen takes. White is confident they don't even need the queens to win because they're up a pawn, and the end game is going to make it easier for them to win. So I like this move. Bishop takes e5. This knight is still so good that it doesn't need to be traded for the other knight. So this is one of those times where it's excellent to trade a bishop for a knight because this knight is clearly much better than this bishop, which is horrible. I think white was just trying to stop black from taking the b-file and, and coming to, to b4 possibly. Well, yeah. Something like this could be met with this, and it's a little messier, so. White is playing very safe and in control. Um, King f8, g1. So here is just simple, they drop another pawn. So when, when you have a good position like this, your opponents just tend to fall apart because it's really hard to defend these positions. King f3, rook a, knight takes d6, check. Maybe they were in time pressure or something, but uh, black resigns here. Okay, so let's just go back. The, the key idea here was that 
White had the winning maneuver, knight b1 to d2. To keep their strong knight on c4 and gain control of the position, they eventually attack the a6 pawn and infiltrate into black's position through the queen side. 